everyone, this is People in Power and I'm Summer El Shahat. On today's program, Guantanamo forever? I'm not optimistic that it'll ever be closed down. The reason is that what used to be called the global war on terror has no definite ending. It'll have to wait until every one of the detainees dies of old age. Two days after being sworn in as U.S. President in January 2009, Barack Obama signed an executive order promising to close down the controversial prison camp in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, within a year. Few policy changes were more welcomed around the world. Obama ordered that henceforth all Guantanamo detainees should be held in accordance with the Geneva Conventions and that interrogations involving torture should be stopped. Eventually, each of the 242 individuals then at the facility was to be repatriated, transferred to a third country or sent to an alternative detention center. Those who could be tried would be. But today, some 180 men are still being held at Guantanamo and no new trials have yet commenced. So what happened? People in Power's Bob Aber's house investigates why Guantanamo is still open and why it could remain a thorn in Obama's side throughout his presidency. The images Bob gathered while filming at Guantanamo were monitored and censored by the U.S. military. This is the Guantanamo Bay Detention Center. The U.S. military operates it on land lease from Cuba early in the last century. Since January 2002, almost 800 prisoners in the U.S. War on Terror have passed through Guantanamo's gates, arriving on flights from the Middle East and secret sites elsewhere in the world held in harsh conditions and interrogated using techniques that did great damage to America's reputation around the globe. There was cruel, inhumane, and degrading treatment. Lieutenant Colonel Darrell Vandeveld was a prosecutor at Guantanamo in 2007 and 2008 for the Office of Military Commissions. The U.S. was the champion of the Convention Against Torture, and we uh, completely disregarded it in Guantanamo. Vandeveld arrived at Guantanamo after serving in Iraq. You were very highly regarded in the military. One of your evaluation reports says save the toughest jobs in the Corps for him. My whole personality is to seek out the, the most difficult missions. I was a true believer. I, like a lot of people, assumed that everyone at Guantanamo was a terrorist. Uh, everyone was guilty. One of Vandeveld's first assignments was to prosecute Mohammed Jawad, an Afghan teenager accused of wounding two soldiers by throwing a grenade into a jeep. According to the information that I had been given, he had given a full confession. When you started looking into the case, what did you discover about the files and evidence? I realized the prosecution office was uh, in a complete shambles. There was no uh, central repository for evidence that could be relied upon, and it was almost as if the Bush administration had never intended to prosecute cases in the first place. And I found that absolutely appalling after six years of holding these people. A videotape of Jawad's interrogation could not be found, and there were troubling inconsistencies in witness testimony. Most disturbing was the treatment Jawad received at Guantanamo. Jawad had attempted to commit suicide uh, by banging his head against the wall of his cell. Vandeveld unearthed records revealing that in 2003, Jawad had been subjected to a routine guards called the Frequent Flyer Program. Which was a sleep deprivation program designed to soften up detainees for interrogation. And it entailed moving detainees every two hours from cell to cell. And this went on for 14 days without interruption. After 48 hours of sleep deprivation, you can't even recall your own name. Anything that comes out of your mouth is completely unreliable. Vandeveld felt the case was falling apart. I sought a deal with Jawad's defense counsel, and the chief prosecutor at the time rejected it. I realized the system was so fraught with the potential for error, the achievement of justice was an impossibility. Vandeveld asked for reassignment to Afghanistan or Iraq. Instead, he was released from active duty. It's my belief that American soldiers have been killed uh, as a result of converts to jihad because of Guantanamo Bay. It's the site of where a lot of inhumane, un-American activity took place. They call them camps, they're prisons. Just tear them down. 
That's what many around the world expected when President Obama ordered Guantanamo shuttered. Guantanamo will be closed uh, no later than one year from now. But that deadline was missed, and efforts to close Guantanamo have failed so far. Undone by Congress, legal dilemmas, and domestic politics. Now many worry that Guantanamo may not even close in Obama's first term. It's unclear as we sit today whether it's going to close at all. Matt Delosio is one of the founders of Witness Against Torture, a group that has been fighting since 2005 to get Guantanamo closed. We're here to hold up a When the deadline for closing Guantanamo passed, Witness Against Torture supporters gathered to protest in Washington. Not only had the promise been broken, um, but we lost a lot of ground on the issue. So you think there was a missed opportunity to close Guantanamo? Absolutely. Over those first hundred days of the Obama administration, we had lobby visits with over 75 elected officials. Uh, and the consistent response from all of those meetings was, we support the president in closing Guantanamo, We're waiting to hear what his plan is. In its first hundred days, the administration set up an interagency task force to determine how each Guantanamo prisoner should be handled. The task force took almost a year to complete its work. I think the Obama administration moved fast, uh, especially for the U.S. government moving on such a complicated issue. Ambassador Daniel Freed is the U.S. Special Envoy for Guantanamo closure at the State Department and negotiates with countries to accept detainees. We have moved over 50 people out of Guantanamo, uh, including 31 to find new homes in third countries. One of those released was Mohammed Jawad, but there are still about 100 detainees at Guantanamo who were cleared for release. The administration wants to hold about 50 more indefinitely without charge and try some 35 in civilian or military courts. Why was it not able to uh, fulfill the deadline in terms of closing Guantanamo? It turned out that there was no, believe it or not, no central place where the records on the detainees were kept. Uh, secondly, there is, to be very blunt about it, a debate within the United States about Guantanamo. It's a highly contentious issue. In fact, it wasn't a very contentious issue until the spring of 2009 after President Obama released the Bush Justice Department's so-called torture memos that authorized waterboarding and other extreme interrogation techniques. I know some have argued that brutal methods like waterboarding were necessary to keep us safe. I could not disagree more. It is a serious step to begin unveiling some of the very policies that have kept our people safe since 9-11. Former Vice President Dick Cheney and the Republicans pushed back hard. The administration has found that it's easy to receive applause in Europe for closing Guantanamo. But it's tricky to come up with an alternative that will serve the interest of justice and America's national security. That was when Republicans decided to sort of move focus onto Guantanamo uh, to put up a big fight against President Obama's uh, plan to close it. Josh Gerstein is a columnist for Politico, a top source of political news in Washington. The fact that President Obama never really faced political combat during the campaign over his idea that Guantanamo should be shut down uh, really led the White House to have a sort of mistaken understanding that uh, they could go ahead and do that without facing any political price. The backlash derailed a plan to persuade other countries to take Guantanamo detainees by settling a few Uyghur Muslims in the U.S. They had fled China because of oppression and gone to Afghanistan to live. When the war started, the Uyghurs tried to leave and were picked up by bounty hunters on the border, who turned them over to Pakistani police in return for money the Americans were offering for Taliban. Each of them were sold out for like uh, three to five thousand dollars, and and then um, Pakistani uh, forces turned them over to United States as uh, terrorists. Rushan Abbas, a Uyghur American, has translated for the military and lawyers representing the Uyghurs at Guantanamo since 2002. The Uyghurs were the easiest case for the United States to deal with because from day one they were cleared to be innocent. But the Bush administration decided not to send them back to China where they would be persecuted. Other countries wouldn't take them for fear of angering the Chinese. But there is a large Uyghur community in Virginia willing to help them start a new life in the U.S. Some of the Uyghurs supposed to brought to the United States, but then uh, it was uh, leaked to the media. Some of the uh, congressmen 
use this to stop shutting down Guantanamo. Worried that the Uyghurs were coming to America led Congress to pass legislation preventing the use of public funds to bring Guantanamo prisoners to the U.S. in 2009. So I believe if President Obama took leadership on the Uyghur issue in particular um, shortly after calling for the closure of Guantanamo and signing the executive order, uh, that, that would have been the thing that started the ball rolling towards its closure. One of the big objections in accepting people from Guantanamo is that the United States hasn't. We could have brought them to the United States safely and responsibly, but we are where we are. Do you think that the United States needs to be willing to accept some detainees, some clear detainees, into the United States in order to close Guantanamo? My job is not to think about the ideal world I'd like to have. My job is to deal with what I've got. Congress also passed legislation banning the transfer of Guantanamo detainees to the U.S. this year. But after arm twisting from the White House, Congress made one exception, allowing prisoners to be brought to the United States for trial. After eight years of delay, those allegedly responsible for the attacks of September the 11th will finally face justice. And last November, U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder announced that Khalid Sheikh Mohammed and four others at Guantanamo would face trial in a U.S. civilian court. They will be brought to New York, to New York, to answer for their alleged crimes in a courthouse just blocks away from where the Twin Towers once stood. Republicans struck back again, sensing an opportunity for the 2010 congressional elections. Interrogate them, detain them, and try them in military commissions offshore at Guantanamo from which no one has ever escaped. This one has the potential to uh, really ignite the right and they think win over a fair amount of swing voters in the middle who just don't think it makes sense to give rights to terrorists or pay for their lawyers or uh, bring them onto U.S. shores. Some people believe our Constitution exists to grant rights to terrorists who want to harm us. I disagree. The potency of the issue was evident this past January when Republican Scott Brown pulled off a stunning upset, winning a Senate seat held by Democrat Edward Kennedy for almost 50 years. What happened here in Massachusetts can happen all over America. Scott Brown used this Guantanamo issue very effectively in his campaign, and it really shook up a lot of Democrats. Soon after Brown's win, Holder announced that he was reconsidering how and where to try the 9-11 defendants, and that the president would be weighing in. I think the president should consider changing positions on Guantanamo and the terror trials uh, sooner rather than later. Professor William Martell of Tufts University believes that a massive shift in public opinion took place late last year, after a Muslim psychiatrist went on a killing spree at Fort Hood in Texas, and a Nigerian radical tried to blow up an American jetliner on Christmas Day. Some of the data that came out of CNN and others said, what was the level of opposition in American politics to having trials in the U.S.? And it was, uh, you know, 30, 40 percent. But after those kinds of events, it doubled. My view is that there are times in democratic societies when you have such an upwelling, a coalescing of public support, that it's very risky for policymakers to run against that. The risks of voting to bring detainees to the U.S. are holding up action in Congress on an administration request for $350 million to revamp this prison in Thompson, Illinois as a new home for Guantanamo prisoners. So are concerns about new legal rights the prisoners might gain if housed on the mainland. Would the transfer of location uh, create more rights for the detainee than if they were just left in Guantanamo Bay? That is a question that I think um, has not really been answered yet, it, yeah, one that we, we're, not, that. we're not sure about. Uh, Republican I, I, Senator Lindsey Graham and others on Capitol Hill are worried about detainees moved to Thompson who win cases challenging their imprisonment after submitting what are known as habeas corpus petitions to U.S. courts. Do we have to release them in the United States? If we can't find a third country, what do we do with them? Graham says he will work with the administration to close Guantanamo. But he is demanding a new indefinite detention law to prevent judges from releasing detainees into the U.S. I'm opposed to that plan. That's not how I want to see Guantanamo closed. Attorney David Reams has represented men at Guantanamo since 2004. My view is that everyone should either be charged or released. I don't think there's a basis for indefinite detention. I think it's contrary to our deepest values to hold men because of a prediction of future dangerousness. Those predictions cannot ever be vindicated, and basically the decision to keep men indefinitely is as good as a conviction 
Reams and human rights advocates say that holding men at Thompson without charge or who have won their habeas cases would just create a Guantanamo North. Everyone is for closing Guantanamo. The question is, what does closing Guantanamo mean? Does it mean shuttering the physical facility? Or does it mean sending men back to their homes or third countries? There are a lot of people on the left who are amenable to the idea of closing Guantanamo, but they're not interested in some of the things Lindsey Graham and others want, which is indefinite detention. Uh, so there's just really no consensus that you can see where you would immediately be able to put together the votes you need to get the legislation through. I'm confident that the legal basis exists to open the Thompson facility and bring people to it, but there are obviously going to be core challenges. Is it a fair assessment to say that many of the people that are in, were in Guantanamo and are still in there were innocent? Some people at Guantanamo, frankly, shouldn't have been there uh, for very long. Uh, the five Uyghurs that are still there are in this category, and there are others. Most of the people at Guantanamo, most of the detainees, I would call volunteers for a very bad cause, people who made a serious mistake of judgment, but they're not hardened terrorists. And generally speaking, those are the people whom we're trying to resettle in third countries or repatriate. Some of the Guantanamo detainees who have been approved for transfer are housed in an open-air camp with dormitory living. Basically, all the detainees here are in, uh, compliant with the camp rules. So they'll pray out here together, they'll eat out here together, elliptical for uh, their exercise equipment, a foosball machine. Few uh, military personnel here gave permission to film their faces, and we were not allowed to identify the detainees or talk with them. Military officials reviewed all our Guantanamo footage and censored any deemed a security risk. But they were eager to show that the facility today is modern and humane. Every detainee will have entitled to eight different books. From the library to medical care, multiple meal choices and courses. We hold six different seminars, uh, Arabic to English, Pashto to English, Arabic literacy, Pashto literacy, art and life skills. The classes are held in one of the two indoor prisons at Guantanamo, built for more than $60 million. Currently over 80 percent of the detainees here at Guantanamo live in a communal environment whereby they have about 20 hours a day of free movement and recreational time. Brigadier General Timothy Lake is the deputy commander of the task force that runs Guantanamo. Many in Congress now are saying that there have been tens of millions of dollars spent in building the prison here and that it should be kept open. We do in fact have first class maximum and first class uh, communal living detention facilities. Are detainees still interrogated here at Guantanamo? Before, yeah, the answer is yes. However, technically, an interview, this is an interrogation right now. So the answer is yes, we talk to the detainees. Do you think some clear detainees could be settled in the United States without risk? I, do I think that some cleared detainees? Cleared de let me just, yeah, add, let me just. I, I understand exactly what you're, I understand the question. Um, I mean, again, that's a decision that will be made by our civil military leaders. Behind me is Camp Iguana, the lowest security detention camp here at Guantanamo Bay. Today, five Uyghur Muslims, who were cleared for release years ago, are still being held here, hoping to be settled in the United States with the help of Uyghur communities in Virginia and elsewhere. We tried to film inside the camp, but when the Uyghurs held up signs protesting their captivity, we were quickly escorted outside. They're really frustrated, they are tired, and they, you know, seven, eight years passing by, not knowing how much longer they will be in captivity. In March, the U.S. Supreme Court did not rule on the Uyghurs' appeal to be released into the United States because the Justice Department argued they had been offered asylum on the small Pacific island of Palau. Palau cannot offer citizenship. Chinese government always can claim over them and say they are our citizens. Fourteen men who have won habeas cases challenging their imprisonment remain at Guantanamo, while the Obama administration appeals decisions that they be released. We don't want to have our government continuing to do this sort of thing. We'd like to stop it. It's unjust. Money was Ruth paid. Hook of Amherst, Massachusetts, asked officials in her town to pass a resolution to help free cleared detainees. The two key components were 
First, to ask Congress to end the ban on any Guantanamo detainees coming to the U.S. The second was to allow one or two detainees to come and live in our community. Nancy Talanian helped organize the effort. These were the men who were used as examples. The man on the left is Ahmed Babacha, who uh, is an Algerian who fled Islamic terrorists in his home country and was traveling in uh, Pakistan when he was picked up and sold for a bounty. And Reveal Mengaza will need a safe place to go because the seven Russians who've been sent back to Russia have been treated very badly. Some of those men can't return home without risk of torture or death. I recall reading that some of the cleared people that were sent back to their own country wound up trying to kill American soldiers. If the President, Senate, and Congress, with all their experts and resources, can't figure this thing out, I don't know how we can be much help. There was a spirited debate, but the resolution was approved. The best thing to help close Guantanamo would be to have cities and towns all over America say, we are willing to take these detainees into our community. I, I didn't know we were such a, a country of cowards, you know, the terrorists down the street, yeah, kind of thing. Vandeveld, now head of a public defender's office in Pennsylvania, also believes Americans must overcome fears about civilian trials for Guantanamo prisoners. The single most distinctive advantage is that the federal system has been tested over and over again. It yields credible, predictable results. Pretending that terrorists can safely be treated as common criminals will not make it so. But Attorney General Holder was vigorously pressed on the issue at a Senate hearing in April. No final decision has been made about the forum in which Khalid Sheikh Mohammed and his co-defendants will be tried. We expect that we will be in a position to make that determination, I think, in a number of weeks. Washington insiders expect the Obama administration to reverse course and decide to try the 9-11 defendants by military commission at Guantanamo's Camp Justice in a new $12 million courthouse that we were not allowed to film. Among all the folks I'm talking to, it seems to be full speed ahead at Guantanamo. And the import of that is that Guantanamo is not going to close anytime in the near future. If you're really talking about trials going on there uh, for years into the future, frankly, he'll be lucky to close it by the end of his second term if he wins re-election. At Guantanamo, preparations are already underway for the first military commission trial since President Obama's inauguration, that of Canadian Omar Khadr this summer. That trial's certainly going to happen here from everything that I've seen, and there's seems to be strong indications there are going to be additional trials. Couldn't that keep Guantanamo open for a while? Uh, the answer is yes. Right now, the Department of Defense is prepared for the long run based on the guidance from our civil military leaders. When do you think Guantanamo is going to be closed down? I can't make a prediction, but I applaud the president's determination to see it done. I'm not optimistic that it'll ever be closed down. The reason is that what used to be called the global war on terror has no definite ending. It'll have to wait until every one of the detainees dies of old age. It'll be around for a long time. That's it for this edition of People in Power. If you'd like to comment on our report or any other matter, we'd love to hear from you on the usual address, aljazeera.net forward slash English. Until next time, bye-bye.